Corporate taxes, something businesses who can't afford the good accountants have to pay. Now, as you can imagine, corporate tax law has so many holes it could have been typed down to Swiss cheese without any major differences. Now, with their most recent plan being announced, the Biden administration is getting out the old spackle and trying to fill in some of those holes. And don't worry, corporations, it's not too late to rebook your capital's flight to the Cayman Islands quite yet. So, let's get right into it. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna hit you with a hot take. The single most impactful Biden tax change is getting next to no attention by the media, rewriting the rules on write offs. Now, corporations don't pay income tax, they pay a tax on profits. This is huge for companies like Amazon's tax avoidance strategy. The basic idea is if I'm a corporation and after expenses I net a profit of $2,000, well, I can either pay corporate taxes on that $2,000 or I could find a business relevant way of spending that money, get my profits down to zero, and then I don't have to pay taxes because, oh, no more profit. For more, here's Jeff Bezos explaining why Amazon is an incredibly unprofitable corporation. Let's talk about profit or in your case, the complete lack thereof, famously. <laughs> it's kind of like we built this lemonade stand you know, 20 years ago. The lemonade stand has become very profitable over time. But we also uh, decided to use our skills and the assets that we've acquired over time to open a hamburger stand and a hot dog stand and so on and so on. So we're in, in investing in new initiatives. Yeah, Amazon reinvests the money it makes in the company, so for all intents and purposes, the company isn't profitable despite having a massive income. Now, unlike citizens, corporations don't pay an income tax, they pay an outcome tax. You can make a lot of money, but if you spend it all on business expenses, you're not going to be paying taxes. Now, Joe Biden's tax plan smashes that mold by imposing a 15% on the financial statement income of companies if they don't otherwise pay that much. Now, if you're concerned about companies like Amazon not paying corporate taxes, this is going to have more of an impact than tripling the overall corporate tax rate. The basic idea is corporations will now have to pay whichever tax ends up being higher either 15% of their income, or the money they take in, or 28% of the profit, or the money they take in minus business expenses. Now, If this specific change to the tax code intrigues you, the magic word to keep track of it during congressional negotiations is income. I repeat, income. If it's a corporate income tax being debated, this is the idea that you can't repurpose your profits in a way that will make you appear to be unprofitable for tax purposes. Also, don't worry Bob's Tackle Shop, this income tax would only be an option if your company is making a revenue of more than $2 billion over one fiscal year. Now, the other major change that Biden is making to the corporate tax code is the one that's getting a bit more attention in the media right now, going after overseas offshore profits. If you're a company that can't expense your way out of paying taxes, don't worry, there's still more options for stiffing Uncle Sam with the bill. Why don't you transfer the profits to a country with a lower corporate tax rate? Basically, you're moving sand from bucket A to bucket B because bucket B has a smaller hole in the bottom. Now, This loophole is adjacent to the profit income difference I just talked about. If you can create a subsidiary company in a low corporate tax area, well, then you can transfer your intellectual property to that subsidiary company and pay the massive licensing fees to use your brand. Those licensing costs are business expenses, so your American company can write them off in the corporate taxes that they pay, and instead those will be seen as profits for the foreign company, where the subsidiary is headquartered and probably paying a lower tax rate. I mean, looking at the numbers alone, you'd think that Google's Palo Alto headquarters was a subsidiary of their way more profitable Bermuda location. Oh man, Bermuda's just charging us so much to use the Google brand. Now, of course, the problem with all this is that Uncle Sam wants to get his beak wet, and passing on profits to foreign subsidiaries leads to less domestic taxes being collected. 
Now this fits into a longer held debate about whether to tax companies based on the location of their headquarters or the location of their income. In this arena, Biden's tax plan and Trump's tax plan are black and white. The 2017 tax cuts focused heavily on the question of what country was getting the corporate profits. If Google Ireland is making a bunch of money, well then that company should pay the Irish corporate tax rate. That's what their logic was. Basically, the idea here was this would allow American companies to be competitive abroad. If the Irish competitor business is paying 12% corporate taxes while you're saddled with 28% corporate taxes for sales made in Ireland, that's going to be a huge competitive disadvantage. The 2017 law lightened taxes on US companies' foreign profits, so a US company in the German market faces a tax burden that looks more like its German and British competitors. Of course, that also meant that if, say, your Cayman Islands branch was just making a killing charging headquarters for licensing fees, that profit also wouldn't be taxed by America. The Biden tax plan looks at the passenger, says buckle up, pulls on the emergency brake, and makes a hard 180 on this strategy. It's focusing instead on generating the most tax revenue. The United States would have a bigger claim on US companies' profits regardless of where they are earned. Oh, your German subsidiary made a killing this quarter? Congratulations. You're an American company though, so pay up. Now this would make the concept of offshoring profits completely obsolete overnight. You're no longer moving sand from a bucket with a smaller hole in the bottom, you're just kind of scooping up and dumping it into different parts of the same bucket. Now a transaction from your Palo Alto branch to your Cayman Islands branch doesn't really matter because you're an American company and guess what, someone under your umbrella made a taxable profit. So. <coughs> The last and in my opinion most boring change it makes is potentially raising the corporate tax rate from 21 to 28 percent. Now Biden has said that this is negotiable and it was 35 percent before the Trump tax cut. This really feels like a lot more arbitrary of a change than the other things I've mentioned in this episode. I can sell 28. It's not 30 and it's not 29, which basically rounds up to 30. And ew, 27, no way, 28. If this number becomes the lightning rod for debate instead of closing the two loopholes mentioned earlier, we as Americans are in good shape. Even infamous non-corporate taxpayer Bezos is saying we should raise the corporate tax rate. Just don't start taxing based on income. So those are the two revolutionary ideas to come out of the Biden tax plan and the change in the percentage corporations will pay. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you found this conversation interesting, I recently made an in-depth analysis video of Amazon's finances as they relate to earnings and paying corporate taxes. Now over here, there should be a link for that video. I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my video videos regularly. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the other YouTube stuff, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.